So it's time to start actually constructing the body of this light. I used cheap pine. Um, you know, ultimately I think this would look much better with like walnut or maple, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money on wood uh, for this experiment. So I decided to do kind of a butcher block look. This is just cheap uh, one by three, I think, pine that I got from the local hardware store. I have to pull all the staples out, of course. I didn't want my runner, my uh, router hitting it. These are six foot long, and so I cut, you know, a bunch of them in half to be able to stagger them and get that butcher block look and do a nine foot long, um, basically glue lamb setup. So you can see here I'm, I'm staggering them so that you don't end up with a seam that just goes the entire width. It, it kind of alternates. You have a three foot on one side and a six foot on the other, etc., all the way across. And I'm just laying them out here for a glue up. Now, I've never done a, a glue up of this size, so I was kind of experimenting to see, you know, what, what was gonna work, what was gonna be easy, what was gonna be a mess. Um, and it's not like a glue up is complicated, but you know, there's little things you pick up along the way. Uh, frankly, it turned out to be a huge mess, but it worked just fine. I really think if I did this again, I'd probably pick up one of those little rollers that you use uh, to spread glue a lot easier. This using a uh, scraper turned out to be a kind of a messy pain in the butt. takes longer than you would think to. And after I got glue on all of them, I laid them up end on end so that I could clamp them together. You can see there's a little bit of warp to the boards and I was hoping that once I clamped it all it would be moderately straight and it turned out alright on this one. I needed one flat side, and at this point in time I didn't know if I was going to hand sculpt it or use the CNC router. I was kind of going back and forth. So I used the planer because if I was going to hand sculpt it, I didn't want to use the CNC router in the video. Uh, this was a bit much to try to push through the planer, but it did okay. Be sure to support the far end or else it'll fall and screw up your planing. The surface turned out alright, ultimately. Uh, but before I got started I did decide I needed it wider so I had to add a couple boards and I was just very careful to line them up so that that bottom would still be nice and flat and at this point I found out that I was going to use the CNC router for the project I was hoping to get a sponsor for some sculpting but it didn't work out here's a little trick I use for lining things up on the router I actually just use the end mill to push it to line it up and for the first few passes, I'm going to use this uh, straight cut end mill. And here we go. Now this is just half of the light. Uh, I decided to do it in halves. Again, because I, I when I designed it, I didn't know if I was going to be using the router. You take several passes, you take out the big chunks, then you start making the... Um, adaptive clearing to, you know, take out the, the bulk of the material. It's kind of fun watching it come out of the material. And here's where I ran into my first huge problem. Something slipped and bam, I just ground right through the middle of all of those parts. Oh, it's so frustrating. 
and to stop the machine, check this out, just right through the middle. It missed a bunch of steps sideways and just, it didn't move. Turns out some screws had actually fallen out of the machine. Uh, I hadn't checked everything in a while, so I needed to go back and, and put those screws back in and tighten everything back up. But once I did, I was able to kind of pick up where I left off. So here I am making sure that my end mill sticks out far enough that my collet isn't going to hit as it's doing the details. You can see there it would have hit if I had stuck it in a proper amount. So I really had to have that thing sticking out there just barely being held on. Which of course makes it less accurate because your tool then vibrates more and you know can be deflected and stuff like that. But in this pine it's really fine. And then I go over for the detail pass. You can see here, I could have taken smaller step overs and really um, gotten more fine detail in there and made it smoother. But I knew I was going to sand it anyway, so I wasn't too concerned with it. And then there was this gouge from earlier. It was time to fix that. So I stuck on a different end mill and just cleaned up the edges a bit to make it the same width as some, some extra wood that I had sitting around. Taking it careful because I don't want to break my end mill or you can see the wood trying to hop up. Uh, because it's not very well supported, so I'm just kind of taking it careful. And then I test fit my wood uh, to make sure I had it all right, kind of sanded it down so it would fit snug and work out, and uh, marked kind of the edges. And the whole concept is that I just stick it in there cut it down to roughly the size it is, uh, cut off as much extra as I can to get it close, and then I just run that section of the uh, parallel pass with that ball nose end mill again. So after I cut off all this extra, it'll just grind it down smooth as though it was doing the original pass, and you can barely even tell, for the most part, where those big gouges were. I'm not sure that a chisel was the best tool, but I just felt like playing with it that day. And then it was time to cut it out. So this is a final pass that just goes around and does an outline of it and cuts it out. I took a lot of really shallow cuts because I didn't want to bend it. And there we have it, the first half free. You can see part of it popped off, I just have to glue that back on. So there's half of it free and it needs sanding. Lots and lots and lots of sanding. There's an incredible amount of sanding that goes into stuff like this. After machine sanding, it's time for hand sanding down in the areas where the uh, orbital sander just really couldn't reach. I just wanted to hand sand down those crevices. Now you'll see later 
I didn't get this thing like perfectly smooth everywhere. I left a lot of stuff. Part of that's because I'm lazy and part of that's just because I kind of liked it with more visual stuff to look at. Now this is the second part. You can see I dried this one on its side and it got a curve to it, but that's fine. It's big enough, it didn't matter. So I'm, I'm taking off material here for the bottom and then I flip it over and, and actually cut the second half here. And the second one went so smooth, you know, after some of the difficulties I had with the first half, the second half just went incredibly smooth. The machine did its job without issues. I actually like uh, the way it looks better with this like kind of kind of digital stepped version of the of the uh, landscape, but I uh, I don't remember why I decided to go with the smooth one. I think if I did it again, I'd probably do the digital stepped one and just leave it. So here's uh, the finishing pass again. Just another look at how it does it. Just going parallel and then sanding. Now this time I saw how much easier it was to sand before I cut it out. So I sanded it in place before I did the final cutting pass around the edges. And then I cut it out and there we have it. Now this is a test fit. I threw the light in there and just clamped the sides together just to see how it would look. And I was so happy at this point. That is exactly what I was imagining. Now you can see the gap isn't perfectly closed, but it looks pretty cool. I was very, very happy with it at this point. And time to start gluing it up. I threw a, a backing on it of quarter inch plywood, which ultimately I think ended up a little bit thicker um, than what I wanted. Actually, that might be half inch plywood. Yeah, that's half inch plywood. I should have used quarter inch plywood. Then the second half on there and you throw the light in there uh, for the glue up to try to get it you know clamped as tight as possible and the light doesn't stay in there uh, because I still need to cut it down to size now there was a, a nasty goof on the side I wanted to clean up so there were actually a few of these I only filmed one where I, I cut out a notch and put some wood in there and I just cut it by hand down to the the surface and sanded it flush. I didn't use the machine to clean this stuff up again. But there were a few places and since I did kind of a butcher block look you don't even really notice those. Now here's a big goof. Watch. Uh, don't cut that while it's on. I shorted out the two sides and burnt the circuit and I had to order a new set for the control block. It's kind of common sense but oh well. Uh, okay, so here I am cleaning up. I put on these end blocks, you know, so that the end would be plugged up and you wouldn't see that light sticking through. I liked how it turned out. And then to finish it, I just threw on a coat of polycrylic. I could have stained it, I could have painted it. I know on my final video that I do, uh, just showing it off for make, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for just leaving it this ugly, kind of unfinished look, but it's what I wanted and I like the way it turned out. And there it is installed in place. I think it's much cooler than the spotlights that were there. They they supplied a lot more light, obviously, but um, you don't really need it there. And this gives such a cool kind of glowy feel, especially at night. You turn off the rest of the lights and it, it lights up that area quite nicely. And, you know, gives you something to look at while you're sitting there. I love it. I'd love to do another one though, out of solid, you know, solid walnut or solid maple or something. I don't know. Uh, but I really like the way it turned out.